this is Nikki in Niagara coming to you from Niagara Falls, Canada. And welcome to Throwback Thursdays where I show you an old art book which has been on my shelves all these years because it's a book that I really enjoy and can't part with. I have been really looking forward to introducing this artist and uh, editor to you, Lynn Perella. She is probably the earliest inspiration that I had in, when it came to mixed media. I just absolutely love her work. And this book is not just of her work, it's a collection of, well first of all I'll tell you what it's called, artists, journals, and sketchbooks. And um, the subtitle is Exploring and Creating Personal Pages. Now, I just so this is a collection of pages from various artists' journals. Uh, at the time, they were mostly called visual journaling. And um, this has a lot of artists that were um, popular at the time. Uh, I'll just show you this page before we get to the copyright page. I love this. I adore it. The Juggler by... Ann Bagby. This book was published in 2004 and I purchased it at the uh, time of publication so I've had it ooh, 14 years. That's a long time. So everybody knows who this is. Bye. If you are in the mixed media world you should know this name. This is Tisha Moore. A page out of her journal. Her style really hasn't changed much. She often does borders around the thing and now she kind of like works in un, like big pieces of borders. Whatever. <laughs> I don't have good words with me today. Okay, so now here we have a picture from Brenda Murray from her journal. So the book is divided into five chapters. We have the getting started on how to create a page. Then we have the books itself all about creating books or using journals. Um, the next section is true fiction about adding text to your pages. Uh, the next section chapter four is icons and imagery. Uh, which is self-explanatory. And finally, chapter five is expanding the boundaries where we will find some interesting stuff. So we can have an example here of uh, Lynn Perella's work. And we have the first chapter, Getting Started, How to Create a Personal Page. Uh, this is pretty cool got the different size pages of the face each one cut out that's cool and um, it doesn't oh this is no no artist name on this one then next we have a Lynn Perella page um, I recognize her style because I really like her very um, raw and rough lots of scribbles bright bright colors and um, she does everything from this traditional um, hats and wings to totally 100% abstract grunge type stuff so here we have um, collaging on an envelope Juliana Coles using space for her inspiration uh, and also this one here is called the creation myth I think I'm just gonna show you I'll name out the artists and say anything that's a little special Karen Michael we I reviewed reviewed her book altered images uh, last on my last Thursday throwback throwback Thursday if you want to have a look at that and these are a couple of pages which this one I believe she shows in that book but I don't think that one she does Lynn Perella 
again. Now we have a, a section, it's a workshop on using photocopies. So we take photocopies and we've got all these different things that you can do with the photocopy. Eight different techniques to use. And there are several of those technique pages throughout the book. Okay, next we have Jean Minix. And we talk about using a favorite quote as your starting point. Now we have a, another uh, workshop. This one is on adding color to your pages. And we have six different techniques. Nope, oh, sorry. Let's make that 12 different techniques. Uh, Lynn Whipple here with the hand. And these two small pages right here. Another technique page. This gives us nine ways to make image transfers. Leslie Riley uses a spiral bound book. Then we have uh, Tisha Moore. These two pictures right here illustrate the uh, borders that I was talking about that are often found in her work. Lynn Perella again. She takes one image photograph here and alters it in some way across the page. Here we have a collaged clown by Anne Bagby. Um, I'm not sure how she did this, but I am imagining that this is like a magazine image, which she has collaged over top of. It looks that way to me. I may be wrong. Lynn Perella doing her one image in different variations again here. And we've already seen The Juggler by Anne Bagby. Okay, now we have using photographs in your work. And here we have some different techniques by Rhonda Roebuck. Again, there's a lot of information on how to do this in the uh, book that I reviewed previous Thursday by Karen Michael. Chapter 2, the book itself, examining covers and types of journals. Now, this is one thing that I just absolutely love is when they wrap string around it. I've never done it. I've thought of it zillions of times, but... Okay, so we have... That was, uh, that was Tracy Moore right here. Um, that's Tisha Moore's husband. And then we have one by Robin Atkins, and we have a beaded journal by Albie Smith. You can see there's beading done on the front of it, but also beads on the spine. Handmade wood journals, and these are okay. So here the book. What am I looking at? Oh, okay. So these are different bindings right here. It says book shelved on book. You can see it looks like bookshelves coming down like this. This is using a chain stitch. This has a decorative centipede running right across. And this one, they call it love letter book, but it is a different type of um, Copic stitch or Coptic, I should say. And here we have a window cover by Michelle Ward. Okay, we have Lynn Perella again. Cigar boxes, using cigar box and any box as the covers for your book. This is uh, by Pam Sussman. Uh, putting lots of found items onto your books, metal and stuff. Judy Reich. Again, Judy Reich. She's used um, typography plates there, brass plates it looks like. Uh, here we have a slide mounts that have been covered all over this and um, this is by Michelle Ward. Now here's a whole bunch of different techniques to use using slide mounts. Um, 
Obviously, you can find these at um, antique stores and such, but uh, at the time that this book was uh, published in 2004, this was an item that the uh, scrapbooking companies were making blank, fake uh, slide mounts to represent the old vintage ones. But there's some cool ideas here which you can incorporate into anything. A slide mount is basically a little tiny square with a smaller square or rectangle cut inside it. A lot more different ideas and these can be used for inchies and twinchies too. More. Obviously this using slide mounts was very popular in 2004 because here we go with more. <laughs> Okay, so now we have a fabric journal, and this is by Lindsay Jacobs. Uh, aluminum foil on the front by Billy Maraglia, and this just, uh, oh, index card. This is the in index card journal, so it'll be a little small one. Okay, now, I remember seeing this. Oh, yeah, this is Tisha Moore. I remember. I wonder if that was something like this was submitted to Somerset or something. I mean, of course, I've seen it here, but... Yeah, this is just really cool. It's uh, fabric covers, and, I mean, look at it. You open it up, got these pages, and... So, yeah, this is just called Funky Fabric Cover Journal. Okay, so now we have some techniques on how to attach something to something. Here we have lots of brads and um, what are those other things called? Um, yeah, it says bezels, uh, index tabs. I can't remember the name of those things that you push, hammer, some sort of metal eyelet thing. <laughs> okay, now this is um, a little book, two little books made by Tracy Moore. That's Tisha Moore's husband. Uh, these are little teeny ones. Then we have the Book of Plenty, and this is what people do today and call junk journaling is when you put all your pages together into one book. Now, I am interested in seeing what they do to bind this book here. Yeah, it's not telling you. These aren't tutorials, but from top to bottom it tells you all the different kinds of paper that you can use and to work in a book that's full of different papers like this. Each page will present its own challenge. That's, you know, what we do now. Okay, now this section is all about adding text. This is obviously Lynn Perella. Again, she uses lots of the dripped paint and layers and layers. She also uses a lot of typography in her work. Okay, so here we have 12 ideas on how to add text. Here we have a page by Brenda Murray. And these are some more pictures inside that book. A haiku journal by Anne Bagby. And we have a little section on stamp carving. Uh, I think this would probably be using a linoleum tile. So that's what we were using back then. Not me, but here we have a mandala by Juliana Coles. Juliana Coles again uses a vintage letter as her backdrop there. And here she's just made little cards. Uh, Lisa Engelbright. Sue Nan Douglas. And here we have uh, 
Oh, this is about making your own stamp again. Okay, this looks like Tisha Moore. Yes, it is. So this talks about doing all that textual writing that she does in her books or in her pages. Mm, Connie Newhanks. Robin Atkins. And this looks like an altered board book. Billy Maraglia again. And I believe this is the same book. Lynn Jacobs. She's got some pullouts and pull ups and stuff. Lynn Perella using a spiral bound book going this way. It's Nina Bagley. That's using encaustic wax. Um Okay, so now we're on to chapter four, about which is about imagery, and this is a page from Limbrella's work. A sketchbook. All sorts of design images. And here we have house plans and what have you in a pre-bound book. These are sketchbooks here. Again, more sketchbooks for those who paint and draw. These are Zeti sketches by Tracy Moore over here. Kind of comic book format. All right, expanding the borderies. Oh, boundaries. <laughs> kind of the same. Now this is really cool. I made something like this after seeing this because it just totally was awesome. I believe now I'm not going to read it because it'll take too much time, but I do believe that each one of these little bits of paper and items uh, like that's the top of a plastic fork were found in the street as the artist walked from place to place. She'd pick up things and and she arranged them on this, which I think is just like really awesome. I did I did one of these after seeing that. And then we have uh, Linda and Opie O'Brien who are using it says seeds. Oh, found objects. Susan Shy and James Accord. They're calling this a diary quilt. Now, wood. Fabric. This is Rice Freeman Zachary. Now, I remember when she came out, and she was kind of like right there at the beginning of um, refashioning, but turning the clothing into pieces of art, wearable art. I believe Somerset Studios started one, which one of their magazines is the one about fashion? Is it Belle Armoire? I think that's what it's called, Belle Armoire. Yeah, and um, Rice Freeman Zachary was in the, in the first issues of that when it came out. Okay, so now here we have a shrine from Catherine Moore. Monica Riff is using paper beads. A lot of paper beads on that. Here is a book put together with, now I know this is something interesting. It is copper. Oh, here we are. Tin cans. Punching out squares from tin cans and using these, <gasps> these little guys that I can never remember what they're called. The little eyelet punchy thingy. Now here's a linear journal which hangs on the wall and the pages go down. And it looks like they're all sewn together. A metal etched cover. Metal on this one too. Also shows a few different types of bindings. I think this is really cool actually. You never really think of putting a book on the wall. And this is how you can do it. 
these are very thick pages. Sometimes I think I've got two together. Okay, so here we are using a bunch of rulers and draftsmen's tools, which have been, oh, I don't know, screwed or hammered together. Tag book. This is a December diary. So, yeah, it's like an advent calendar. And that's it. That's the last page. I just love browsing through this book. I don't know how many hours I have spent just staring at the pages and looking deep into the layers, like especially with um, Lynn Perella's work like this. I just love it. I'm really, I'm really attracted to it. And there we go. This book is I highly recommend if you just want some eye candy. Yeah, you can go to Pinterest or Instagram or whatever and um, look at pictures online. But there's something about just, you know, sitting in the bath or in bed and browsing through the pages of a book and just staring at the pictures. I love, love, love this book. So thank you for joining me on Throwback Thursday and join me next time. My Throwback Thursdays are always going to be on Thursday, but not necessarily every Thursday. But I'm trying my best. So if you got this far, then please leave me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe down below and touch the bell and you will be notified when all of my videos come up, not just random ones. Thank you so much for joining me and have a nice day. Bye-bye.